The information contained in this podcast is an expression of opinion and does not constitute investment advice. This is the Gold Money Podcast with Alistair McLeod, keeping you up to date with expert opinion on precious metals and the markets. Hello, this is Alistair McLeod on behalf of Gold Money. And with me on the line from Vienna, I'm very pleased to have Ronnie Sterfler, who is a returning guest. Uh, and uh, Ronnie um, uh, was working with Erstebank, but I think still writes reports for them, um, but has set up a separate fund called Incrementum. Uh, and I'm sure Ronnie will put me right if I've got that wrong. Welcome to the show, Ronnie. Hi, Alistair. Thanks uh, for having me again. You, you're, you're still writing for Erstebank, I think, aren't you? Yes, I'm currently in the process of collecting data, doing charts. I'm starting to to, 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 to write at the moment, and the next report will be published on um, June 27th. Right. So you must actually have a fairly good idea in your own mind um, as to how the report will be structured and the sort of information in it. I mean, it's been a very active year, hasn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, um, the thing is that this time I'm only allowed to write uh, roughly 30 pages. And my big problem is that uh, I think I could write uh, 200 pages uh, with all the developments going on in, 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 in not only in the precious metal sectors, but uh, in, in the economy and, and the financial system itself. But yeah, um, plenty of stuff to, to, to write about. Absolutely. And uh, how's your new fund, Incrementum? How are you doing with that? We're basically in the, in the process of setting the company um, up. Um, we're seven partners, most of them from, from Switzerland. And um, the company will be incorporated in, 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 in Liechtenstein. I also moved to, to Vorarlberg, which is next to, um, to the border. And yeah, then we'll um, uh, launch uh, a fund uh, which will be um, based on the Austrian School of Economics basically and we're having a thematic approach and as you would uh, as you probably uh, would uh, uh, know um, precious metals will will play a, a pretty central role in this in this in this uh, fund but uh, yeah I can tell you a bit more in about two or three months right excellent okay well I wish you all success with it Thank uh, you. Talk, talking about uh, Austrian economics um, we have I think a continuing deterioration in the global economic conditions since uh, we last met in Vienna and since we last talked indeed um, and uh, I don't know what your take on it is, but I, I see um, the banks are still very, very uh, delicate, if you like, uh, and uh, governments can't um, raise the money to uh, bridge the gap on their budget deficits without having to print it or getting their central banks to print it, which is um, essentially, I think, uh, the position the Weimar Republic found itself in uh, back in 1920 to 23. Um, would you broadly agree with that or have I got it wrong? Uh, no, that's, 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 that's totally right. And I think it's a, um, we're, we're traveling uh, some sort of a narrowing road um, with inflation on one side and deflation on the other side. And um, as you and, and, and probably uh, everybody uh, interested in the Austrian School of Economics uh, would would suggest is that this current uh, process that would happen um, without um, interventions by central bankers and politicians uh, would be extremely deflationary. So I think we are kind of bouncing from one side to the other side with some sort of increasing force. Um, we, we're, I think at the moment we're having uh, uh, lots of deflationary pressure in the system. Um, you can tell that um, basically by um, uh, the commodity prices being very weak, um, gold-silver ratio um, showing um, increasing um, uh, or, or decreasing uh, uh, relative uh, strength of silver versus gold. Um, we're seeing um, that, uh, uh, that the bonds, especially the infla inflation protected, the tips um, are coming down. So the market in general is playing deflation now. But as we all know, central bankers will do whatever it takes to avoid the deflation because, you know, uh, basically 
uh, a deflationary uh, cleansing process would be would be lethal to the to the to the system which is based on debt at the moment so um uh, as uh, what, what we are basically seeing at the moment um is that there are already rumors that um the fed might increase quantitative easing um mr buller just said that um he's concerned by inflation being too low um there are um, lots of uh, um, 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 commentators suggesting that the Fed should even do more. So I'm, 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 I'm pretty certain um, that um, when it comes to gold, um, the current correction will be pretty soon pre- will pretty soon be over because as I've said, central bankers will do whatever it takes to, to avoid deflation. Yes, um, I yeah, uh, that's very much my take on it. Um, I mean, after all, helicopter Ben Bernanke um, didn't get that sobriquet uh, for nothing. Um, he got it by saying that uh, at the end of the day, uh, the Federal Reserve Board can produce as much money as it takes, and they will replace contracting bank credit with um, freshly minted money. So um, I think I think that's right. I mean, the deflationists, it seemed to me. Um, uh, have a point insofar as you rightly say there, there are strong deflationary forces in the economy. And indeed, that has been the case, I think, since the banking crisis. But we're now in a situation really where uh, the outcome, uh, if they continue with current policies, is bound to be hyperinflationary or uh, leading to the collapse, if you like, of paper currencies. Uh, that is um, uh, That is the end result, isn't it, Ronnie? Uh, absolutely. I mean, um, I think Dylan Grice uh, wrote a brilliant piece about the connection um, between uh, monetary inflation and trust. And basically, money is also um, based on on, on 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 trust. And when you're debasing money, you're debasing trust. And nobody can estimate when this trust finally collapses. But I think what we have seen recently with the whole Cyprus uh, thing, um, that really was a, some, some sort of a, a negative milestone in the whole story. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm presenting um, quite often. And a few years ago, people, um, after my presentations, people were asking, okay, um, what do you say about silver? Would you rather... Uh, recommend buying silver or what about the mining stocks and what's your price target for gold and nowadays after the presentations people are really concerned about hyperinflation they're asking me where to store their gold they're asking me if 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 uh, i'm thinking about you know riots on the streets um civil wars and and all those um very dramatic um scenarios and uh, I think with the whole uh, Cyprus story, um, uh, the, the concerns became even bigger. And that's what we're basically also seeing um, with the physical demand for uh, for, for gold. Uh, I talked to a lot of uh, physical uh, uh, gold uh, traders and they said um, since um, these decisions were made uh, about Cyprus, um, uh, the demand is just uh, going crazy, and and we've seen the same with the with the current takedown. Um, I, uh, I think nobody would have expected um, that physical demand during such a correction um, would increase dramatically, like it happened. Uh, can, can, can I can I stop you there because sure, you're, sure, you're sure. saying something very very interesting. What you're saying is that the rush into gold actually started with the Cyprus event rather than than the knockdown in the price of gold and silver in April. The knockdown in the price of gold and silver in April merely accelerated it. Am I understanding you correctly? Yeah, that's basically that what I'm what I'm hearing from from uh, physical dealers in uh, in Germany and in Austria. And I, I it, it basically went parabolic with all the. Um, uh, w- 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 with the, the, the crash uh, in, in, in April, but um, it started picking up definitely um, after the whole Cyprus. In, in the wake of Cyprus. Now, th- yeah. that is fascinating because um, we hear stories, um, and of course these things you know, are never confirmed, but we hear stories of shortages in, the, in, in, in London in particular. We hear stories about uh, banks like ABN AMRO writing to their customers 
with gold accounts, I mean, presumably these are unallocated gold accounts of some sort, and saying that uh, we, we can only settle in cash. Um, if Cyprus triggered a rush into bullion, then that would make sense of these anecdotal reports. I mean, I don't know whether you can comment on that. Uh, yeah, that's 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 totally true. I mean, um, uh, you know, there's uh, lots of uh, different stories and aspects about the whole takedown that happened uh, yeah. in the price of gold, and 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 uh, we've been reading a lot. Uh, we've been talking about this takedown for for quite a while, and uh, the only thing that I can say is that Cyprus uh, was not. Uh, responsible or, or the, the the possible sales of the um, central bank reserves from Cyprus, Cyprus uh, did not have uh, any impact on the price of gold. I think no, it was a very was, small amount, isn't it? I mean, I, I can't remember. I think it was something like um, 2, 2%, uh, 12, 13 tons maybe. or something. Yeah, it's two percent of the daily uh, trading volume at the at the LBMA. Yeah, I, I think there were really strange uh, things lining up. You all already mentioned uh, ABN Amro. Uh, then we had the, the the Fed minutes that leaked out a um, few few hours afterwards. Um, uh, Goldman Sachs issued a extremely negative and aggressive uh, sell recommendation. We had uh, Societe Generale um, uh, downgrading gold. Uh, we've seen CIBC. Um, uh, downgrading gold. Uh, who else? Credit Suisse said it, 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 it's a wounded bull and the bull market is probably over. And then what happened on Friday? I mean, the 1530 was a really, very, really obvious um, um, support level. And we, we, we um, went through the support level in very thin, late trading with massive orders. And then immediately, you know, there's CTAs, managed futures, uh, all this algo trading and so on. Uh, and they, they, they sort of increase this downtrend. And then what's normally happen, happening from, from a psychological point of view during a weekend, people are reading, um, in the newspapers, uh, gold price collapsing, um, uh, new price targets. I don't know. Um, 200 US dollars. So everybody is getting nervous during the weekend. And what's the, um, what's the way, um, to play it? You, you, you call your broker or, 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 or you just, uh, sell your gold. Sell, 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 yes. <laughs> and that's just a very, very normal, um, um, hurt behavior. Yeah, but it, it think, didn't it didn't work out like that, Ronnie, did it? Because you had a, a very strong bounce towards the close, and silver, which we know uh, the uh, paper market people are very short of and can't close their shorts, uh, silver actually ended up on the day by a fair margin. Yeah, that's that that's true. But um, I think what we've then seen on 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 Monday was a typical panic low. We've seen extremely high volume. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it was uh, it was like a fifty percent higher than the 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 the, the last all time high in in volume traded at the comics. Uh, I think I got calls from people that haven't called me for for decades, uh, being really nervous and saying, "Oh, what's going on with gold? Um, is it is it collapsing now? Is the bull market over?" And that's that's normally a panic low, but. What's really en uh, encouraging for me is the fact that, as we've said before, that the physical demand is that high. And uh, we're, we're seeing it not only in Europe, we're seeing it all over the world. We're seeing it in the US, we're seeing it in Australia, we're seeing it especially from Asia. So I think um, this is for the first time um, uh, that really on a, on a global basis, People are starting to 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 react in an anti-cyclical way because normally they they tended to 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 act very pro-cyclical. Um, so with every new high, um, they started buying and buying, and and as soon as it dropped or corrected, they started selling. And now we are seeing the complete opposite, um, and that's that's very new, and that's 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 a very good uh, aspect from my point of view. Yes, and I think uh, I think that the the, the bullion it, it caught the bullion banks very much by surprise. Um, but do, do you think this is because we're so used to thinking like investors rather than uh, people who um, 
actually question whether real money is uh, uh, government currency or whether it's gold. In other words, if going back to what you were saying earlier about the confidence factor in, in, in paper money, if paper money loses that confidence and collapses, it's no longer money, whereas that never happens with gold, full stop. So um, if people start thinking again that actually gold is the only money which actually does make sense, then you can understand why they would buy it very heavily on any dip. I mean, they're not driven, if you like, by market market sentiment, which is very much... Uh, investor related the idea that you know if prices fall perhaps i've got to rethink my strategy and perhaps i should sell and cut my losses that doesn't enter into it with um, you know sort of indians and chinese who um, you know have a long history of having their savings all in precious metals and they've done very well i mean do you do you think there's a sort of battle between the western investor mentality if you like and that I want long-term protection type mentality, which is prevalent in Asia. Uh, yeah, uh, that's that's difficult question. I I think that I don't like um, the the differentiation between you know the smart money and the dump money. Um, I've met a lot of institutional investors, and I don't see any any big difference in their sophistication or in their uh, market <laughs> timing. Um, compared to the so-called dump money. I think they're just um, uh, trading uh, uh, larger books. Yeah, It's just <laughs> they're, yeah. uh, they're moving much more money. But I, I think that, the, you know, that the, as the Americans call it, the, the Joe Sixpack, yeah, the, the, the guy from the mm. street, um, people are realizing what is what is happening at the moment. And, 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 um, I've met many people um, uh, that I, that I uh, talked about the Austrian school of economics and 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 uh, what the current monetary inflation um, uh, will lead to, and 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 they understood it. And I think um, a five year old can understand that um, printing uh, uh, your way out of pros- uh, into prosperity will not work. That um, increasing um, uh, those type of, of, of QE programs will not work, especially because the last few rounds didn't have any 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 big effect uh, on, on on the economy itself. So I think what we're seeing at the moment, uh, we're seeing massive asset price inflation. Uh, it's not only on the stock market at the moment. We're seeing it, you know, in uh, wine. We're seeing it uh, at art auctions. We're seeing it real estate. Uh, it's going crazy, basically all over the world. Bitcoins, very, very interesting topic from my point of view. Uh, so we're already seeing this monetary inflation. As you know, the, the, the so-called Cantio effect is showing that um, money production is not neutral and uh, that the new money spills into into the economy and in, in, in sort of a different speed and, and, and strength. And Normally, as Rothbard would suggest, um, the next phase will be consumer price inflation. And I'm absolutely certain that, that we will see that and that uh, central bankers would have to massively decrease um, uh, the monetary aggregates uh, many months before. But I'm absolutely certain that they will be too late. And as you know, it's 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 a bit like uh, it's the cold so-called catch-up inflation. Yeah, it's 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 you knock on the catch-up bottle uh, a few times, nothing happens, and then it all um, spills out, and it's really hard to get it in again. So it's the, it's the old saying: shake and shape the catch-up bottle, none will come, and then a lotl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's absolutely right. I mean. Um, it, I think that the, if I can just pick you up on one thing you were saying, what is interesting is how difficult people find it to see um, uh, how inflation is going to uh, st- come back. I mean, by inflation, I mean price inflation, the rise yeah. in prices. Um, uh, now, we do know that governments um, tend to underreport inflation. Um, there's enough evidence around the world, not just Argentina, uh, that uh, uh, confirms that statement. But um, uh, in general, um, I think 
I think what you're saying is that uh, not only from the Austrian theoretical point of view, but also uh, empirical ev evidence shows that after a period of time, if you have a monetary inflation, then it does affect, it does begin to leach into prices through, as you say, the Cantillon effect. In other words, where the money is, is, is spent and where it enters the economy, those are the prices it drives up first and then it sort of goes from there. And in a sense, perhaps we're already seeing this because if you look at London, for example, um, the beneficiaries of fiat money who are oligarchs, uh, bankers and all the rest of it are driving up property prices hugely in London, um, whereas in the rest of the country, there's nothing. I, you know, I don't know whether you get much of that effect in Vienna. Yeah. But, but it's, uh, it, you know, it's, it's very much, um, it, it, it's difficult, I think, for many people at this stage to see quite how inflation is going to take off because they, they, they assume that inflation is always tied to demand for goods. Um, now, my understanding of Austrian economics is that it actually quite simply explains why that is not the case every time. Would you think, I mean, do, do you feel that you need to have a pickup in demand or, or um, uh, the, the, if you like, commodity prices, prices of goods and services could start rising without that real pickup in demand? In other words, could we have a stagflationary outlook? Definitely. I, I mean, we've, we've seen it in the 70s. Um, we've seen high, uh, high unemployment in the 70s. Uh, we've seen high inflation in the 70s. So um, I, I think I, I don't really believe in, in, in those concepts of output gaps and so on. And, and, and I don't know what, what the trigger will be if, if it's going to be energy. I mean, um, from a geopolitical point of view, there's so much going on at the moment. I think the uh the 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 the, the whole um uh, geopolitical environment is that fragile at the moment that there might be uh some 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 big thing happening soon and and then we would see uh energy uh prices uh going up dramatically um perhaps a bit like in the 70s but i think what's really important um if if we make this comparison with the 70s um, I think uh, the reasons for the for the for the consumer price inflation and for for for, for the also this monetary inflation in the seventies um, was in the sixties. Uh, in the sixties, we've seen a massive growth um, um, of, of 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 the monetary aggregates, and you only saw the effects in the seventies. So um, per perhaps it's 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 a bit similar now, and I mean. Um, with with all the experiments going on uh, on a global basis, I mean it's not only the U.S. It's 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 also U.K. I'm 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 really curious what Mr. Carney is going to do, and I think the, the Canadians are. <laughs> are, are, are pretty happy that that uh, he left um, the country. Um, I think what's what, what we're happening in in Japan at the moment. I mean that's that's monetary harakiri. Nobody uh, will will really knows. Um, how this will end. But from my point of view, uh, I think Hugh Henry once said that uh, I don't know the last hundred pages of, 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 of the book, but I know com I, I completely know how the book will end. And, 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 and when you compare that saying to, to Japan, um, it, it's going to end horrible. And, and, and I mean, um, if even, you know, Countries like Cyprus, Greece, uh, or, or Slovenia, which which will which is a, getting a bit bigger problem nowadays, um, are really a big threat to the system. What's going to happen if if Japan finally blows up? I mean, well, that's, that's a very good question. I mean, we've seen uh, Japanese bond yields um, uh, spiked up um, last week quite sharply, and the yen went through the hundred to the dollar, uh, and just kept on going. I mean, this is very worrying, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. And I, I, I think it's really funny that uh, most of the main, mainstream is uh, really uh, cheering to um, um, uh, this abonomics um, and Mr. Kuroda at, at the Bank of Japan. I think it's, um, that's, that's definitely the end game. And what we are seeing in, 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 in Japan now, I, I, I think that's uh, the, the, the only way to, 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 to 
with some uh, more months or perhaps years, but um, uh, the 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 the, um, the reasons uh, for for the, the the instability and 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 and, and this situation are in the past, and I'm always saying that. What what we're seeing now on a global basis, it's it's not about Lehman Brothers, it's not about um, uh, Greece, it's it, 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 it's not about the eurozone. I, I think the 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 uh, the real problem started on fifteenth uh, August of nineteen seventy one, and um, this is just um, the end game of a of a systemic failure. Yeah, that was the, that was the Nixon shock when um, uh, America came off. Uh, any version of gold convertibility whatsoever, the the, the seventy one event, and yeah, really, I, th- yeah. I think I think put, putting another way, what 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 you're saying, Ronnie, is that um, uh, the central banks have uh, had no restriction on the issuance of currency from that time, and that is the source of our problems today. Uh, absolutely, I mean, um, if 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 you compare, like from from nineteen seventy. One until now, um, uh, total credit market debt is up um, by um, 35 times. Um, um, the GDP per capita uh, on a on a on a uh, inflation adjusted basis is only up by 65 percent. Um, if you compare industrial production uh, GDP and, and 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 numbers of the if you will the the real economy, you can see. That there's since 1971, there's just a decoupling from uh, financial industry um, debt creation um, uh, to the to the uh, real economy. And at the moment, you know, um, the no- as we said at the beginning, the normal process would be highly deflationary. But um, in this system, um, uh, deflation would be lethal. And 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 Jörg Gude Hulsmann. Um, said a very interesting uh, thing about uh, the differentiation between deflation and, and inflation. He said, the true crux of deflation is that it, that it does not hide the redistribution going hand in hand with changes in the quantity of money. It entails visible misery for many people to the benefit of equally visible winners. This starkly contrasts with inflation, which creates anonymous winners at the expense of anonymous losers. And that's basically what the, the Cantillon is already uh, is, is describing. And therefore, I think that, um, you know, the, 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 the whole um, this equilibrium between the, the richest 1% and, 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 and the poorer getting poorer from day to day, um, the reasons have to be um, found um, or searched in, in the monetary system. And as I said, I think this whole mess started uh, in, in, in August 1971. Well, um, I think that's a very, very interesting note to um, end on, and I'm sure um, our listeners will reflect on that statement. The other thing that I think has come out of this, which is very interesting, is the relationship between Cyprus and the knockdown in the gold price somewhat afterwards, uh, and the potential links in terms of the reasons why those two, well, we know why the first event happened, but did it lead to the second event? Um, Ronnie, thank you very much indeed for uh, taking the t- trouble to talk to us. Um, and how can our listeners find out a bit more about you? I mean, it, 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 Have you got a website for Incrementum yet, or um, do they still pick up your reports from Erster Bank? It's not online yet um, because we're in the process of setting everything up and, and, and you know, financial authorities are very strict uh, these days. So it will um, be online probably in, 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 in two or three weeks and our funds will be launched probably by July or August. And the report will be um, uh, presented on, on June 27th. And I'm sure that, that you can just find it very easily by by googling it and, and, and yeah yeah that's it's going to be called in all with trust again right okay ronnie sterfler thank you very much indeed and uh, we will do this again at some stage in maybe a few months time absolutely thank you very much alistair Take thank care. you subscribe to the gold money newsletter at www.goldmoney.com 
to receive email updates on new articles, videos, and iTunes podcasts from our Gold Research section.